Hello, and welcome to Shelf Stuff. My name is Kathy Berner, and I work at Blue Willow Bookshop, independent bookstore on the side of Houston, where I am the kids and young adult specialist, as well as the event coordinator. One of the best parts of my job is to connect readers and authors. I'm so excited to host this event today on behalf of Blue Willow. If you purchase a book from one of the creators here today, you will receive exclusive Shelf Stuff swag. Try saying that three times fast including a book plate signed by the creator, a shelf stuff tote bag, and a really cool shelf stuff activity sampler. Visit bluewillowbookshop.com to place your orders. While you're there, take a look at our virtual event calendar as well as our blog, which features our staff recommendations. Today, we're going to meet four amazing creators. We are going to learn about their new books, and I'm going to ask them a few questions so we can learn more about them. And then we're gonna play a super fun trivia game using Kahoot. Let's get started. Let's start off first with David Slavin and Adam J.B. Lane. Take it away, guys. Uh, thank you very much, Kathy. Uh, yes, I'm Adam J.B. Lane. I am part of the Odd Gods team. Uh, our book is Odd Gods, the Odd Olympics, and I am the illustrator. Uh, and why not over to you, David? Uh, hey, I'm David Slavin. I'm the uh, author of all these Odd Gods books. There are three of them now. I'm uh, coming to you from my apartment in New York City. Over my one shoulder is my wife's pottery. That's back there. Uh, there. And then over my other shoulder is a, is a drawing my daughter made in second grade of Ra the Sun God. So that's kind of cool. So it's great to see you. And oh, actually, I'm going to move, move along. I'm actually going to read a little bit from Odd Gods. This is uh, from chapter four. Where, with Adonis, his brother Adonis, uh, his father Zeus, and his mother Freya. So here we go. And Adam, I think, is going to hold up the book so you can see an illustration. Chapter four. That night, Adonis spills the beans to our dad, Zeus, and our mom, Freya, about how the Romans challenged us to a tug of war. The Romans, dad says, blech. They're so weird and different. They're not so different, scolds mom. Besides, even if they were, which they're not, what's so bad about being different? I'm a Norse goddess. I'm different, aren't I? Well, uh, uh, sputters dad. That's different. I think different's kind of cool, I say. Of course you do, replies my brother, because you're different. I don't like different, growls dad. I like same. Same hair on my head, same beard on my face, same sheets on my bed, same food on my plate. Dad's a poet, but he don't know it, shouts Adonis. I've even worn the same toga for 20 years, Dad proudly exclaims. Speaking of gross, I've had the same undies since I was five, because they've got cute little centaurs on them. TMI, Dad. And here's what else is going to stay the same. We're number one, and the Romans are number two. Then he turns to Adonis. You better show them who's boss, son. I read you loud and clear, oh great one. That's my boy. And what are you going to do to the Romans, Adonis? Gee, I'm not sure, I reply. Maybe bake them some cookies? Excellent. So now... Hey, Felipe, let's turn it over to you. Well, uh, thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, my name is Philippe Cousteau. I am the co-author of the book, uh, a new series called The Endangered. And um, it's about a motley crew of endangered species that get hyperintelligence and work together to help save uh, other animals in nature. And um, I'm a filmmaker and explorer and um, spent my life in environmental education and conservation. So thrilled um, about the book. And I'm going to read from chapter 32. Um, Nukilic, a reef's voice trembled. He coughed. We're not the enemy. We're your friends. I'm not working with you anymore, the polar bear declared. I'm with Quag now. She turned her attention back to Sheridan. All Quag wants is for you to give up, to leave the ranch altogether, and I'm going to help him see to it in exchange for what I need. I'm going back to the top of the food web where I belong. What are you talking about, Sheridan spat, afraid but angry. My family's been on this land for four generations. Nukilik's expression changed, but only slightly and only for a second. She locked eyes with Arif, 
This is the simplest solution. Quag will hand over the ferrets, you'll take them back to the Galapagos, and then he'll fly me directly home himself today. How, Arif jeered. He says he has access to a plane. And you believe him? Yukilik dodged the question. I'm sorry, Arif, but I'm done with all this silliness. It's too much. It goes on from there. Excellent. Jonathan, it's your turn. All right, thank you so much, Kathy. And thanks to everybody uh, who's here. I read uh, everybody's books and they're awesome. So uh, definitely consider picking those up. Uh, my name is Jonathan, I'm from Chicago and uh, I wrote a few books called The Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian. There's a couple more on the way, there's two out right now. Uh, it was originally a podcast that I've been doing from this room right here in my basement <laughs> for four years. And then uh, and now it's a, a book, but the books are new stories based on the podcast, not taken from the show. And uh, I'm going to read you uh, just a couple of pages. Uh, I feel like I should set this up just a little bit. The kids in the story, Finn and his friends, all live uh, on a space station. They explore various planets. And uh, they just landed on a planet that's about to blow up. And they were told they need to stop a bunny from blowing it up. So I think that's that about covers it. Finn punched the coat. Oh, and they're sorry. And they're about to uh, open up their spaceship to try to stop the bunny from stealing it. Finn punched the coat into the panel on the side of the ship. The hatch opened. Ah! A shriek sounded from inside. All the explorers put their hands to their ears, even Foggy. The small furry creature Doug had shown them was sitting in the pilot seat. It had fuzzy little paws on the controls, and apparently it was as, as, as scared of the explorers as they were of it because its scream curled all their toes. Ah! Please stop, said Finn. We're not here to harm you. The creature stared at Finn with large, frightened eyes. Its lower lip quivered, and its whole body seemed to vibrate in the pilot chair. Well, we might be here to harm it, if we're being honest, said Vale. Ah! Yelled the bunny creature. Wait, no, said Abigail. Ignore my friend. He has trouble understanding everything. Hey, said Vale. I understood that. Abigail shook her head. We're not here to harm you, she said. We're just here to stop you. Stop me from what? The death bunny said. Stealing your ship? I wasn't going to steal your ship. Why are you accusing me of trying to steal your ship? No one's accusing you of anything, said Finn. But you are sitting in the pilot seat, and you are pushing the launch button over and over again. Click, click, click. The bunny tapped at the big red button. I'll stop there. Thanks. <laughs> Death bunny, I love wonderful. it. That's Thank you so much for sharing with us. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. So for the first question, when you were 10 years old, what was your favorite book? Uh, Anybody I guess I'll go can first. start. I'm in the upper left here. And that, that feels uh, like I should start. Oh, no, go ahead, Dave. Go ahead. I, I think I got one. You go ahead, Jonathan. Uh, the Hobbit. And it's kind of still my favorite book, to be honest. Uh, my tastes haven't changed that much, but definitely The Hobbit. Uh, I loved Why? the 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 junior um, uh, kind of the, the junior classics. So I loved um, reading the um, uh, um, Sherlock Holmes books when I was uh, when I was oh. little. Uh, I guess I'm next in order. I think when I was 10, uh, one of my favorite books was The Phantom Tollbooth, um, uh, which is just a wonderful book full of wordplay and puns. And it's also got a lot of great illustrations in it by the great cartoonist Jules Pfeiffer. Um, so uh, it seems only natural I would uh, enjoy that book. Okay. So David's disappeared. So when he comes back, we will ask him. Um, did you always did you always know that you wanted to write books? I mean, I know you have all had very different careers, but now you're all writing books. So what a what led you to that and b what made you want to do it? Philippe, you want to start? Sure. You know, for me it was a definitely a circuitous route, a roundabout uh, route. I um, you know, my background is in education and conservation. I come from a family that is focused on particularly ocean exploration for three generations. And and um, so as a storyteller, which is more what I consider myself, I've done documentary, I host documentaries. Um, I've got a syndicated series called Awesome Planet. I've done shows with Discovery and BBC and CNN over the years and 
articles and, 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 and lots of different books, but there, the consistent theme in my work has always been focusing on youth and education and the environment. And so in particular, we, um, you know, I always believed in the power of, of scripted, of, of fiction. Um, we call it scripted in the, in the, in the television space of, of fiction and how uh, we can use those kinds of stories to excite and tap into the passion that young people have for the environment and for animals, but do it in a way that is, you know, a narrative story that they can really sink their teeth into, so to speak, and, and get excited about. And so um, the opportunity to work with Harper Collins about two years ago and my co-author Austin Aslan um, to put this book together um, was a, like a continuation of that process of really being a storyteller for the environment. Great. How about you, Jonathan? Uh, well, for me, you know, I uh, I, used to, I, I used to write fiction for grownups for a, while, a long time. And um, then I had kids and I started reading lots of children's books and really fell in love with it. And um, basically what happened was I had this idea for Finn and I was going to do it as a book originally. But then we started listening to audiobooks with my oldest son on car rides. And I saw how much he took to uh, listening to books. And so I decided originally to do it as a podcast as a way to have that same experience. And the thing about the podcast is that it has a lot of interactive elements in it. So kids write into the show, they submit ideas to the show and we write stories based on their ideas. And, uh, and what I learned very quickly is that kids are way smarter than me. I won't say all adults, but definitely me and more creative than I am too. And, uh, and so it's been uh, something that's really inspired me to keep uh, producing stuff for kids because I think the kids, their imaginations are uh, so powerful and they, they go places I could never go. Uh, so it's really fun to, uh, to make, to write books for kids. Excellent. Adam, do you want to go and then we'll add David in? Uh, sure. Thanks, Kathy. Um, I've always been interested in storytelling uh, from a very early age. And when I was a small kid, I would fold up little books out of paper and I would fill them with drawings. Um, and then uh, later in life, I was actually working in animation in Los Angeles. I, I live in Boston now, but I used to live in L.A. And I was working in animation, and um, I, uh, I, I started doing this volunteer work where I was uh, reading uh, picture books uh, to, to kids. And, uh, and I thought this was really good because I would, I would understand what kids were really into, the stories they, they enjoyed. I thought it would help with my animation work. And as I started to do it, I saw how these kids were really responding so emotionally and getting so excited about these books. And it was such a, a direct connection with them, being in the room with them, that I realized that I wanted to go back and start making books and, and really be part of that process. So that's what took me out of animation and back to, to making books. So David, we're talking about how you ended up telling stories. Wow. Uh, well, I think I missed the, uh, I, I was cut out for the uh, book thing and book part. And I, I did love Mr. Popper's Penguins. And uh, I think it was the Phantom Tollbooth also when I was 10. Those were two of my faves. Um, I, I, I've got two kids and I've been telling, I was telling them stories ever since they were little. I was also uh, an, an actor of, uh, and, and a voiceover artist. Uh, so part of my job for the last 20 years has been to use my voice to tell stories, whether it's narration on uh, films or audiobooks or uh, any sort of things. And, and then I, and I, and I wrote a lot of uh, sort of comic satire and things like that, but I, I still always love, I just noodled around with stories all the time. And I just, I, I, I think my, my kids would say, this is great because you 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 still act like an eight year old. So you're now you're writing for eight. You you understand like eight year olds because you yourself <laughs> are pretty much like an eight year old, and you never grew out of that. So that's uh, just kind I would of like to interject and say, having worked with David, that is absolutely true. I mean, I just I I am I'm just so I never really stopped being like eight, and so it's nice to be able to tap into that and put it down on paper. Those are all great answers. I'm so excited that you are all in the storytelling sphere. Um, when let's think about your characters, what made you? I know, uh, 
kind of not only what inspired you to put this story together, but what was the inspiration or the impetus to create your main character? I'd be interested to hear Philippe answer this one, I think. <laughs> uh, well, I first just want to say Dave Barry, one of my favorite comic writers, humor writers, uh, Miami Herald, uh, my favorite quote is, you can only be young once, but you can always be immature, David. So I'm with you on uh, the, Absolutely. that. Uh, I love him too. He's just the best. <laughs> love him. Uh, for me, as you know, as, as an environmental advocate, uh, explorer, et cetera, all the different stuff we do, you know, I have a 17-month-old daughter and uh, I just turned 40. 40, in the last 40 years, we have lost half the biodiversity on this planet. We have lost 68% of wildlife on this planet. Uh, and when I hold my daughter, uh, I think I really question, you know, what kind of a world am I and are we passing on to children like her? And so this crisis of biodiversity loss and collapse is one that we really wanted to talk about and is why the, the team is called the endangered. It's a crew of endangered species that have come together. And um, it was really important for us to create a narrative story where we could address issues and some of the big challenges these types of animal species are facing um, through the course of the book so that we can help empower a, a younger generation to recognize the importance of these issues but also that, that when we come together, um, uh, that, that we can do incredible things with hope and passion and, and integrity. And, and um, uh, at the end of the book, we have real facts and data about each of the different animal species. We worked at the World Wildlife Fund as a partner on the book. Um, so we have the different characters, you know, profiles of them, but real information about them. We're doing a series of webinars all throughout November this month with actual experts in the field. So the, the book is really a desire, you know, to, to elicit a spark of the conversation about these animals, what's facing them in the real world, and hopefully getting kids passionate about doing something about it. I applaud you. That is wonderful. I Great. Applaud yeah. You. yeah. That's I why I wanted you to answer that question. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it, Jonathan. Thank How you. important yeah. it is. It's, it's amazing. And, you know, if you I'll, capture I'll David follow a that child now. at that age, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, David, you well, go. All right. Uh, so the simplest thing is that, is that when I was a kid, I was really short. So I knew what it was like to have to kind of figure out a way to uh, deal with that and still, you know, like hold your head up and uh, be a part of things and not just be you know, picked on or picked last or anything like that. So that, that I, I already had a window into that when I was a kid and, and I have two, uh, I have two daughters and, and I saw in them, I saw how one of them kind of, kind of sailed along. Like, like they're not like life was pretty, I won't say easy, but she navigated things in, in a pretty um, seamless sort of way. And my, my other daughter, it wasn't like that. It was, it was harder. It was like, but that she was, I knew had like an, just amazing gifts and amazing strengths and uh, talents that my other daughter who was kind of sailing along didn't have. They each had their own things. So when I thought about this, I really wanted to honor both of those kids. I wanted to honor the 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 kid who who has it hard, and then the one who seemingly has it easy, but also has their own challenges. So that was that was really kind of the impetus for me doing these books, and and to have some part jokes that, that as well. <laughs> hey, to tag on to that, how did you develop the characters visually? Uh, there was uh, that was really a very involved process of doing lots and lots of drawings. Um, I keep sketchbooks and I'm always drawing in them, uh, little ones that I can carry around with me. And uh, there was just a ton of back and forth between David and myself. And uh, first of all, wanting to capture the strangeness of the characters, the unique uh, look of the characters, uh, but then also wanting them to be believable as kids because. If they didn't read as kids, then I don't think they would be that interesting to a kid reader. And 
so we went through a lot of iterations and what was really, you know, our creative uh, partnership was really just beginning to flower at this time. Uh, and it was really exciting to be going back and forth and to be uh, contributing characteristics and tweaking the characters. And then David comes back to me inspired by what I've given him. Um, and the characters change a lot over time. Uh, we lost some, we gained some. Um, and I think they really, uh, really became sort of more interesting as a result. And there's a lot of myself in these characters, the, the sort of well-meaning Nebish, who's our hero, Ardanis. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure that's a, a reflection of myself, uh, just as uh, perhaps uh, the way he's written is a reflection of David. Yeah, it was an amazing evolution. It was so. You know, if, if I if there, I wish there was a uh, a little part where we could see where he's where just Adonis alone started and where he ended up it was just so cool. Those kinds of collaborations are always so fascinating. Yeah, it was. Hey, Jonathan, funny. you want to chime in? Uh, yeah. So for um, for in terms of creating Finn, I mean, really, for me, it was about uh, thinking about like watching my kids grow up, and then thinking about myself as a kid, and uh, and it was sort of similar to what David was saying is that a lot of times people and kids are are celebrated for their various achievements or their various like specific skills, and so what if you had a kid? who didn't have like a kind of lockdown skill, like he's really good at sports or she's captain of the math team or something like that, you know? And so Finn is uh, basically his skill is that he's very creative and, and kind of a good problem solver. Um, and so creating the whole team of kids that go up into space was, uh, was really fun because it, it got me, it allowed me to show like, yeah, there's El Elias, is, who's one of his friends, is an engineering kid. He like, loves to build things. And Vale is a very physical kid, so he's like kind of their like, combat guy. And then Finn doesn't have the kind of one quality that you can pin down, but the fact that he's able to uh, think creatively is what ends up saving them a lot of the times. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of celebrate that uh, in kids. I think all of your books are just are so engaging and the fact that you've given such thought to the to the main characters plays a big role in making them so. Thank so you. in these strange times, uh, we can't always do what we would normally do. We can't always go out and interact with people. So what how are you pursuing during the pandemic? And have you started any new pursuing any new hobbies during the pandemic? Hmm. Adam, you want to start? Uh, go uh, gosh, new hobbies. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm 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 doing the dishes a lot more. I don't know. Is that a hobby? <laughs> a lot really of cooking. So good. So much. I should run upstairs and get a plate right now and just do a plate for all of you. Just squeaky clean. It's fabulous. <laughs> That's good TV, yeah. <laughs> so, like, we're doing, yeah, so we're you know, doing Kelly, more, I like, we so always much have of my life traveling. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, sorry? No, go, go ahead, Philippe. Oh, I was just saying, I, I travel so much for work. Um, my hobby has not been has been, been not being on an airplane. Uh, it's been terrific. And being able to be home with a little a little baby girl has been a silver lining amongst all this uh, difficulty. I also, you know, run a nonprofit, um, working on another book about the ocean, um, have a, a fiction podcast we're working on, a TV series we're developing, you know, a bunch of other stuff. So we've been very, very busy throughout all this regardless, but um, it's been really nice for us to be home. And I too, David, love to cook. So uh, that's one of my, that's my stress relief. So uh, I've been able to play with a lot of new recipes, a lot of new recipes and, and been growing a little garden out back. We have two chickens in the middle of West Hollywood, California. We have two wow. little chickens in the front, front yard, um, which are legal here, oddly enough, as long as they're not roosters. So um, we're, we're just having a lot of fun with our little menagerie you, here. You get, how many eggs a day do you get? 
You know, they, they're new chickens. Uh, they're only six months old and they start laying around six months. So, but I keep going out and scolding them every day, actually, to um, warn them about they better start laying. So there's hopefully like three or four, you know, eggs a week uh, from these uh, Polish chickens, but they're funny looking. So they don't lay a lot of eggs, but they have a lot of personality. So cool. And what are their names? Uh, my wife named one um, Heidi Plume and Cindy Cluckford. <laughs> Very, very <laughs> LA. Uh, very you can, LA. You can admit very it was LA. you. I mean, you don't have to say it was your wife. You can admit that you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you got me. I'm, okay, I'm fair enough. enough man. Yeah. I'm busted. <laughs> See if I got a picture here, actually. Um, <laughs> for me, okay. For, so, in terms of, Philippe, oh, yeah, Jonathan, you go. Uh, so, at the very beginning of of staying home, we set up a ton of bird feeders in our backyard. And, uh, you know, it was kind of migratory season and we just attracted a ton of birds and that was really fun. And we would, uh, you know, it was just a blast to see all these. We had lived in this house for 10 years and never seen more than like a couple of sparrows. And now all of a sudden we had all this wildlife in our backyard. That was really fun. Uh, but, you know, birds come and go. So we haven't seen as many lately. Uh, and then other than that, I've really been uh, playing a lot of Minecraft and Fortnite with my kids. I'm getting better at Fortnite. I, most of the time I get destroyed. I'm starting to get a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, that that I would say the one other the, I think we all probably that is awesome. So that that nature that the experience of nature during during this time and in a totally different way than we have have been able to see before for me has been wow just to to be and there were there was a time when I was able to be out of New York City I was able to be on Cape Cod and 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 see so much, so much nature that I hadn't seen before and so much quiet. And there were, the, there were times when it was, that was amazing. And also that time to be with my kids that, that I really haven't had. And I will treasure that always. So we've had, we've had a lot of fun. Well, speaking of nature, this is um, Cindy and Heidi. A photo oh of yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, oh, they're, beautiful. they're Polish chickens, which is why they have this bouffant. And it's what Big Bird, what kind of chicken Big Bird would have been. So anyway, I appreciate I that, uh, oh, that you immediately awesome. took out a picture of your chickens, but not your baby. So. <laughs> well, I have that too. Don't get me started because. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so I just, side fact, I'm married to an exceptionally avid bird watcher who just walked in the door because there had been a, there was a rice harvest going on west of us. So I got a text, rice harvest, got to go. Because <laughs> when the rice harvester goes through the fields, the birds oh, yeah, fly out. Course. And yeah. it's fall migration. Yeah. So he what, is. What's is he seen? Is what's, his big, what's his big find? Has he seen? John, what's your big find this week? He saw a yellow rail today. Those are oh. notoriously shy birds. Oh, Does nice. it get better than that? So, I don't think so. <laughs> It does. It, it, it does. There, you know, there are some very exciting times. And again, yeah. it's be, with all the with us kind of slowing down. He's had an opportunity to see some amazing, amazing I'll, birds. I'll that. Okay, so speaking of birds and Polish chickens, do you have any pets? Oh my God! I think my, my I'm going to try to get my dog. Might be wandering through. <laughs> okay. Well, David's uh, looking for the dog. Adam, Here's the, as oh, nice. Here's the baby with the uh, with it with oh. one of the Polish chickens. So. Finn, his David's dog. Oh. This is Finny, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and uh, Finny's Finny's sixteenth birthday is next week. So oh, wow. he's turning sixteen, and he's he's just hanging in there. He's <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's blind. But oh. it doesn't affect his uh, his fun and his uh, personality. He's just a wow. he's just the best Pretty dog ever. Had. So that's that's him. Well, well, Kina, get up. And I know Adam has two. I, uh, what do we got? Oh my God! Look oh, at that. Wow. Here's Kina. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm also a dog owner. I've got two dogs. We got a puppy uh, about a year ago. He's now not a puppy. I mean, he's he's a huge dog. 
Uh, I've got two dogs. I've got an old dog uh, whose name is Mr. Tobus D. Bobus. And uh, a puppy is uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson, like the baseball player, because he's got white. The, I, hey, Jonathan, you're in Chicago. So That's right. Yep. He's got, uh, he wears a pair of white socks on his forelegs. So he's nice. uh, Shoeless nice. Joe Jackson from the White Sox. And he's crazy. He's so crazy. Shoeless <laughs> Joe, Joe was going through a bit of a, a he was a, he was a little naughty, wasn't he? Wasn't there a time he that he was? Scam. We call him a scam. I made a, I baked an apple pie last week, a fabulous apple pie. We went apple picking and I set it on the table to cool like. And he came and he ate it while my back was turned. He ate the whole pie. And it's so hard to be mad at him because it's like a cartoon. How can you be mad at this adorable dog? It was, uh, we, we tasted a little of it first. It, it, I think it was a good pie. I mean, it might have been. <laughs> Great. I have uh, I have two cats, Owl and Cheetah, two kittens, six months old, and I would go fetch them, but uh, they would tear everything down before they I even got to the computer. They're just yeah, little yeah. tornadoes, so we're gonna leave them outside the room. <laughs> Wonderful! Thank you so much for chatting with us. This is just so much fun getting to know you and learning about your books. We are now going to move to Kahoot. And while they are setting the screen up, um, I've got two more quick questions. Okay, here comes the screen. So let me do this. I'll do the housekeeping, and then I'm going to ask my questions. Um, you can either open a new browser tab or window or on another device, like a phone or a You can go to kahoot.it. That's K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. And enter in the code that appears at the top of the screen, and then you will have access to the trivia game so you can play along. While we're waiting for people to log in, uh, first question, tell me one of your favorite words. Doppelganger. Great one. Uh, Tomfoolery. Mm. Uh, ubiquitous. Uh, I'm a fan of Susurus myself. Susurus. Hmm. <laughs> you guys are great. That what is does something. Susurus mean? And now, thinking about your books, oh. tell me a favorite meal of one of your characters. Uh. uh uh, I think it was Norwegian. Oh, oh, uh, Norwegian lutefisk, which is Adonis's favorite meal, and is the stinkiest, oh. most horrible, awful smelling, awful tasting. I've never had it, but I've. It's legendary for how how awful it is. You it's had horrible. it. It is horrible. I have had it, and it is horrible. I am the child of a Norwegian American. It is horrible. It, right. Okay. <laughs> so you know exactly. Oh, it's, it's, and, that, and that's uh, Adonis and Zeus love it. Adonis just can't believe that his anyone eats this because it tastes kind of okay, tastes that like is going to be a topic for the family. Right. Yeah. It, it tastes like we call it fish jello. Fish jello. There you go. That's Dave, part, it's in the book. Uh, we have a, another character named Jermys who uh, loves all things sort of dank and disgusting. And I was thinking his favorite meal would probably be uh, rocking cabbage on moldy, uh, moldy old bread. That'd be a nice sandwich for Jeremy's. <laughs> this, I don't, I, I want to take up too much of the time, but this is uh, Adonis's recipe for lutefisk. It's in, it's how to make oh, wow. lutefisk in there. So it's another, it's a big part of the book. So you see, Philippe, our book is educational as well. <laughs> <laughs> Cultural. I definitely learned something. I have heard of Lutefisk, but uh, uh, I did not know how to make it. So I have the copy of the book. I haven't gotten there. I'm going to have to look yeah. it up. And don't, soap, don't that it. looks very appetizing to have soap as yeah. one of the key ingredients. Yeah. Um, well, being a narwhal, I would say one of our characters, uh, Murdoch, uh, he, narwhals love Arctic cod. So um, probably Arctic cod, much more straightforward, not quite as, uh, as gross. Uh, for me, I would say that the characters in the book play. How about game. you, Jonathan? 
Yeah, on the space station, the kids play a game that's kind of like laser tag, but they can't play with lasers, so they they uh, I want to say steal, but they kind of hoard rolls at dinner and then throw them at each other later on. So uh, I'll say bagels because bagels make uh, good projectiles. Excellent. I like so I think I like we've got people these, signed uh, in. And the yeah. Aren't they fantastic? I love them. I'm not, so not going to pick favorites, but Charming Urshan, I'm rooting author. for you. Um, each author is going to read their three trivia questions, and then we're going to move on to different trivia rounds. So, Jonathan, we're going to start with you. All right. Sounds great. Here we go. Charming Urchin, don't let me down. Where was Finn Caspian born? In Canada? On a boat? Canada. In space? Or in a hospital? I like this music. Do you guys have any guesses? You're allowed to chime in. I know the answer. Do, do yeah, I, I, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> give it away. I want. I want Balanced Duck to have a chance. Right. Good job, everybody. Boom. Creative crane. Creative crane. Keep going, Balanced Duck. I, I believe in you. <laughs> What is the name of Finn's robot? This was actually in the what the part I read, but I didn't say he was a robot. So is it Foggy, E.T., Fuzzy, or Skip? Now, I can tell you that uh, probably if I named him E.T., I'd be in a lot of legal trouble. <laughs> you know. Probably eliminate that would be problematic. Oh, yeah. Oh, good job. All right. People were paying right. attention. Charming urchin. Let me see. See your name come up. Oh no. Balanced right. duck moving right. up. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is the book series The Adventures of Finn Caspian based on? A podcast, a TV show, a comic book, or a movie? Oh, another. How how well were people listening? Yeah. Right. Right. Have to I, know, I, I know I look like a movie star, but we can probably uh, eliminate that one. I thought you were <laughs> threw uh, Scrabble tiles out of a bag, and that's how you wrote it. <laughs> right. yeah. Nice. Good, Good job, enough. everybody. Good listening. Yeah. Look at Balanced Duck. Just keeping going. Normal orcs, too. Normal orcs. That's a good, deep, deep track of animals right there. I like, <laughs> I like that. Exactly. Nice. Okay, Philippe, Take I care, think buddy. you're next. Yep, there you go. Perfect segue. Um, all righty, let's see here. What do the main characters in the Endangers need to rescue the animals from? Good question. Embarrassment, a predator, uh, extinction, or capture? I was going to guess fish jello, but now I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Ludafisk, yes. <laughs> <laughs> figure out a way to put that in book, too. <laughs> they people from embarrassment by teaching them to avoid faux pas. <laughs> Excellent. All right. No, 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 no. Extinction. That's right. <laughs> All right. Got excited leopard coming up. Balanced duck. Adorable oryx. Shining lion. Oh, holding its own. All righty. Which animal is not one of the endangered? Um, a lion, a pangolin, a polar bear. Let's see behind my camera. Or a narwhal. I was going to guess Polish chicken. Polish <laughs> definitely not part of our... Although if they don't start laying eggs, they may join the ranks of endangered species soon. <laughs> well, the, the cover gives away a little bit here. It sort of spelled Nawal like he's from uh, from Boston. Well, I know, some... Adam. He's a <laughs> uh, Nawal. Nawal from Central he's Square. He's a neighbor. Yeah. From Boston. Uh, correct. A lion is not part of the team of the endangered, which is a pangolin, a polar bear, a narwhal, uh, an orangutan, and two black-footed ferrets in the first Oh, book. golden bee. Hmm. Okay, we've still got shining lion and adorable oryx neck and neck. 
Yeah. Darming yeah. Urgent, I know you're there. Alan's back, bringing up the rear. Now you're you're climbing. Uh, oh, uh, see how well y'all were paying attention. I'm the host of What <laughs> TV Show. Um, uh, Animals Down Under, Exploration Awesome Planet, Under the Sea, or what is it? Uh, the Earth as we know it. Huh. How well were people paying attention? I did mention it earlier. I again, if, I was down guess. under. Then your accent is very subtle. So that, yes, it's it's, <laughs> it's whittled away. Yeah. <laughs> Trips on the Bobby. <laughs> uh, two people got it right. Exploration Awesome Planet. Good job. Let's see who who was it though. Was it? Oh, adorable oh, wow. Oryx! Oh, yeah, oh, killed oh, it. All right. Really, really listening, adorable go. Oryx. Really good. All right, uh, Dave. That is excellent. Okay, okay now we're moving we'll to Adam and David. Right. I'll start. All right, I'll start us off there. Oh, you, you'll start. You start. Sure. What event do the characters in the Odd Gods compete in? The World Cup, the Grand Prix, the Olympics, or the Super Bowl? What could it be? Odd Gods. Hmm. Hmm. It's in that subtitle. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going with the Grand Prix. I going with the Grand Prix. Yeah. They all look old enough to drive. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you didn't want to research yeah. Mario Kart. Oh, look well, at that. Nice. Look at nice. Boom. That's brand recognition right there. Ooh, on fire, Oryx. Adorable. Oryx is quick. All right, Adam, you take this one. All right, I'll do it. Mathena is the goddess of what two things? Math and poultry, math and rivers, health and wellness, science and stars. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling health and wellness myself. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, health and wellness, definitely exercise. All of them, all are important. It's very, very hard to draw yoga pants though. I don't know if I can handle that. Oh yeah. Nice. I'll g I, I can give a slight genesis of that name, that Athena is her mother. Oh, look at, oh, Shining Lion. Uh, Athena is her mother, and she had really bad handwriting, and, and she was meant to write math and poetry on her birth certificate, but it came out poultry. Okay. <laughs> what school do the characters go, go to in the Odd Gods? The School of Atlantis, Corinth Middle School, Ithaca University, Mount Olympus Middle School. They could they could have gone to Syracuse. <laughs> Actually, uh, isn't uh, University of Georgia in Athens? Oh, everyone's doing yes, really well. We got some well. I God's fans in the crowd. Wow, everyone's doing well. It is it is a back and forth. It is a, it, going down to the wire with Shining Lion and Adorable Oryx. Balance Duck back in the top five though. Balance Duck has had a had, it's had a rough it's time. Sure. So now we're moving on to more book related trivia. So you guys can chime in if you want to. You can't compete, Jonathan, but you can pal. certainly shout out your answers. <laughs> Coraline's fake parents have Okay, in, place in of Coraline, oh. what do Coraline's fake parents have in place of eyes? If I know Stickers, this answer, should I say marbles, it or no? rocks, or buttons? You can, can if you answer? want, or you could throw yeah, people off. I don't know. I don't want to steer anybody wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's buttons. It's buttons. I think, I think it's buttons. buttons yeah. I, think yeah. it's, uh, I think it's book plate signed by Neil Gaiman <laughs> instead of I. Love this book. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Buttons. Excellent. They knew the buttons. The answer was buttons. All right. Let's see who's doing well. Boom. Oh, adorable Oryx is back at the top. Golden again, bees I'm, coming in there, though. It's on fire. Huh? That's good. Uh, again, I'm Polish kitten. Yeah. I'm not on the board. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Lisa Greenwald's TBH series is written entirely in what? Emojis, text messages, pictures, or encrypted codes? What do you think? I know this one. I think a book of emojis would be amazing. I'm going to say text. 
Let's say text. Okay, everybody but me got it. Cool. The answer is text messages. TBH, Excellent. To be honest? Yeah, I think so. Exactly. Adorable Oryx, but Golden Bee's moving up too. Okay, finish that title. Chronicles of Lothlorien, Narnia, Terabithia, or Neverland. Oh, well. I mean, do yeah. we really? this was almost what I said with my favorite book when I was 10 years old. So. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> there was that movie with Vin Diesel in it, though. I mean, that's that's a good choice. Yeah, uh, one of my pets just one of my cats. Just oh, <laughs> I like the outward <laughs> okay. pet to the arms. Yeah, that is great. There we go, Narnia. <laughs> Narnia, yes. <laughs> Hope everybody got that. Adorable Oryx is quick on the trigger, killing it, killing it. Hey, adorable Oryx, hold on. Yes. Okay, who is the author of the Spy School series? Kwame Alexander, Stuart James Ponty, or David Tucker? Uh, I think I it's Stuart Gibbs. I don't know. I can't remember the author. I'm distracted by Jonathan's other kitten who just came in. Yeah, look at this kitten right here. Look at that kitten. <laughs> I thought I had locked the door. Awesome. <laughs> Stu Gibbs. Gibbs yes. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay, not much back. shifting in the top three. Yeah. Oh, yep. There you go. No, All right, I'm next right. question. In Matilda, what is the name of the school headmistress? Miss Trunchbull, Miss Conwald. Miss Umbridge or Miss Jackson? Umbridge, that's a good good word. It, uh, Trunchbull, I believe. Right? It's Trunchbull. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to nom I would like to nominate Mrs. Gorin, my third grade teacher, who was the scariest school <laughs> school teacher I ever had. Oh man. What was her name? Mrs. Gorin. Oh. Miss Trunchbull. All right, Miss Okay, and the last question in this section that is about to come up. What are the names of the main characters in the School for Good and Evil series? Hannah and Katerina, Ida and Agnes, Agatha and Sophie, Carrie and Trixie. Well, one of my daughter's name is Sophie, so I'm just gonna guess Agatha and Sophie. Because why not? There you go. That's a as good a reason as any. Right? We had a cat named Sophie once, so I'm going with you. Okay. <laughs> Booyah! You did it. Waiting for the cat. All right. <laughs> okay. Right. Nope. Still hanging on. Okay, now we're moving to some general knowledge trivia. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm ready. This is my specialist subject. Adam is a huge okay. trivia buff. He's a in a in a he's in like a professional league of trivia. A league of really? What food yeah. serves as the base for guacamole? Carrot. Carrots? I can tell from the photograph. Potato? Definitely carrot. <laughs> or potato. Potato molly would be interesting, you know, a little melted butter, some salt. Mm. I mean, I like carrots. Maybe. Carrots, a little, yeah, little steamed so shredded top. carrot with I don't know what else in it. Potato molly, like yum. I do like guacamole. Uh, yeah, um, they're very good. Everybody got it right. Staple here in California. Nobody listens. Oh, really? All right. Uh, what? Oh, yeah, uh, still, still close here. Adorable Oryx. Nimble Kitten, 10 yeah. cards in a row. Who lives in the mm. pineapple under the sea? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's... Peter mm. Pan, Harry Potter, Mr. Magoo, or SpongeBob SquarePants? Matthew, you have Harry to, Potter. You have to really... I wonder if kids know who Mr. Magoo is now. Yeah, really. 
<laughs> Harry, oh Harry Potter got tired of the of the of the of the drafty castle and so he moved to a pineapple. Yeah, he moved to a pineapple. <laughs> I mean, he lives in a closet already. Yeah, so which is in the lake next to the school. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. It's a step up from the closet. Okay. Adorable Oryx would Let's do see. well on Jeopardy. Just oh. boom, right yes, in there. Adorable. With Okay, how many nights is Hanukkah celebrated? 12, 2, 4, or 8? I was going to say, you're going the wrong direction. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I was like, 5? What? Yeah. It's 8. Oh, yeah, it's 8. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Got to get y'all. Yep. Yeah. Got to get your 12. There we That's go. a long time for Hanukkah. More presents. Yeah, it's true. Hey, I Shining like Lion. Look, look, at, look, at, look at Shining Lion. No. Yeah, we have movement. Replace the adorable Oryx. And Golden is, Bee on the rise. Wow. It is they really tight. Yeah. Yeah. They count. This they have come down to the last question. Got two left. Oh, Philippe. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Philippe, what is the largest ocean on Earth? Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, or Pacific? I feel like I can't. I yeah, can't, you can't say this. You know, I'm going to guess Indian. I feel like I'm <laughs> automatically out of this. Philippe, you have to, to play favorites, too. You have to treat all the oceans equally. That's true. I do love the ocean. Now, the <laughs> um, actually, the deepest isn't on here. So the smallest is on here. But, What's uh, the deepest? Uh, the Southern Ocean, well, the consistently deepest, the deepest point in the Pacific, but the consistently deepest is the Southern Ocean. Smallest, the Arctic, uh, the Indian is the warmest, and the Atlantic is the most explored. Mm. Mm. That was cool. Well, that was excellent. And growing, okay. actually. Oh. The Pacific Ocean is shrinking, and the Atlantic's growing. Oh, the Atlantic wow. is growing, and what is shrinking? The Pacific is shrinking because the North American plate is moving about the rate of your fingernail grows, it's moving, and the Pacific is shrinking, and the Atlantic's growing. Wow. That's some good ocean knowledge. Thank you. Huh. Excellent. All right, we have two questions left. What does a thermometer measure? Weight, height, temperature, or body mass? Height. I am definitely forty <laughs> degrees tall. If you if you were going to guess height. Then you could, you'd like you'd like the character of Punius, who's uh, who's there on the book, falling off the <laughs> falling off the edge of that. If he's the top, <laughs> it might be the height of a thermometer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, let's see. Is there any adorable movement? Adorable orc, right back in it's there. The yeah. Finger on the buzzer. Wow. Do you have excited leopard yeah. though? Okay. Lightning reflexes. This is our last question this coming up. What color are zebra's stripes when they are first born? Yellow, wow. black, orange, or brown? I know this one. I know this one. I know this yeah. one. I did not know this one. I think it's brown. <laughs> I'm gonna get brown too. But I think like I'm thinking of yellow, and then it's like that candy stripe gum that you get you used to get that those you sticks. Oh, two baby zebras at the zoo here. Ooh. Yes, that is brown. correct. Brown is right. Oh, let's brown. see now what happened. Oh. oh, okay. Golden bee. All right, golden bee. Right, golden bee. Oh. Oh. The bronze medal. I know. Good work. And there. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Well done. Congratulations. It, it was a neck and neck battle. It was. It's a few that hundred points. That was so fun. Wow. fun. I love well, Sally, it is time to, Yeah, exactly. It is time to wrap things up. <laughs> I do too. Look how engaged we were. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank all four of you for joining us today and to the viewers for chiming in. 
Jonathan, Philippe, Adam, and David, thank you for your time. Thank you for your creative endeavors. And thank you for creating great books for kids to read. I also want to thank the team at Shelf Stuff at HarperCollins for partnering with Blue Willow Bookshop. Again, if you want any copies of any or all of these authors' books, you can order them at bluewillowbookshop.com. When you purchase any of these books with the link below, you will get exclusive Shelf Stuff swag, including tote bags, signed book plates by the author, and a great sampler for you guys to play with. Thank you so much for watching and have a great week. Thank you. Thanks, so everybody. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thank you, Blue yeah. Willow. Thanks, Thank everybody. You, Shout out to you.